So if you are there, capital gain tax is one of the taxes levied by the Ghana Revenue Authority, or it's one of the taxes mandated by the Ghana Revenue Authority to collect from we, the individuals and companies that apply their trade or receive or accrue their income in Ghana here. So when you go to your lecture notes, they say capital gain tax is payable by a person or capital gain on capital gain accruing to. When we say accruing to, I want to explain the terminologies over there. When they say accruing to, accruing to does not mean that the asset has been disposed of by you. No. When they say accruing to, it means that the money is coming to you. So somebody can sell it on your behalf, but it is accruing to you. You can sell it by yourself, but it is accruing to you. So any money that is meant for you, the fact that the thing has been sold on your behalf or is coming to you, it means that the gain is accruing to you. Or derived by the person from the realization. When we say realization, what do we mean? When you sell an asset, you have realized the asset. When you gift out the asset, you have realized the asset. Are you getting it? So the fact that the ownership in the assets have changed hands, realization has happened. So you can see an examination, then they will just bring these terminologies, explain the following terminologies, accruing to what is realization, what is a chargeable asset. You should be able to explain all these things at a go of a chargeable asset. So we'll come and then we'll explain what a chargeable asset is later on. So from this small definition that I read, we have accruing to derive by realization and chargeable assets as terminologies you can be asked to explain. Now, taxpayers are required to report any capital gain and pay to the relevant authority. I get any, so you must report any gain you have made and then you pay to the relevant authority. Now, at what rates do we pay capital gain. Capital gain tax is 15%, 15%. So you pay 15% on any asset that you have disposed and make a gain on it. Now, before 2015, any gain from disposal is taxable at 15%. I get any, but after 2015, it will be added to your income and then tax at the prevailing income tax rate. So before 2015, any gain that you made is taxed straight away at 15%. So they tax you 15%. But after 2015, they don't do that again. What they do is that they add it to your chargeable income and then they tax you straight away on your graduating income tax rate. So what they say, they say, oh, they say oh, capital gain tax is payable by a person at the rate of 15% for the period of 2001 and 2006, and 5% from 207 year of assessment of capital gain accruing or derived by a person from the realization of a chargeable asset by that person. However, the Income Tax Act 2015 has abolished taxing capital gains at 15% and instead prescribe it to be added to the income of the taxable person during the year of assessment. So from 2015, you don't tax the person 15% anymore, but whatever you get as a capital gain or the chargeable tax or the taxable income, you add it to his chargeable income and then tax him at the graduated income tax rate. So when you say the graduated income tax, it's what you already know. What you did in first semester is the graduated income tax rate we are talking about. Now, when we say chargeable assets, what do we mean by a chargeable asset? Or when do we classify an asset 
as a chargeable asset. Now, I'm going to give you an assignment. I will tell you what a chargeable asset is, but you are to go and find the difference between a chargeable asset and then a depreciable asset. So in addition to the first assignment I gave you, add this assignment to, to it. The difference between a chargeable asset and then a depreciable asset. It is very, very vital for you to know the differences between the two. Let me, let me make this call and, and get back to you. Yeah, so let's continue. So as I was saying, I've given you another assignment to find the difference between a chargeable asset and then what? A depreciable asset. But I'll tell you what a chargeable asset is. You go and look at what a depreciable asset is and then you tell me. Now, a chargeable asset can be classified in two forms. A non-resident chargeable asset and then a resident chargeable asset. So when we talk about chargeable asset, it can be a non-resident chargeable asset, and it can also be a resident chargeable asset. A chargeable asset is classified a non-resident person or a non-resident chargeable asset. One, if they are buildings of a permanent or temporary situated in Ghana. If they are buildings of a permanent or temporary situated in Ghana. So, Let's say Melcom Ghana came and built their shopping mall in Ghana. It's a permanent structure, but it is not a resident asset. It is for a non-resident person. Or Quares Galvao, the people who did the Circle Dubai, and they are currently doing the uh, Carnation overpass. They have mounted a temporary structure for their workers and they are inside for the meantime I get any, those are some of the things you are talking about. Business and business assets, including goodwill, permanent establishments situated in Ghana. So a company like that have established that goodwill of construction in the Ghanaian fraternity. Land situated in Ghana. Shares of resident company in Ghana. Part or any right of interest in over any assets referred to as about. So any non ghanaian who have stake in all these things here, once they have stake in this and they are considered non-resident what? Person or non-resident asset, okay? So these assets are termed chargeable. So any of these assets, if you sell them in Ghana here and you make gain on them, you will pay tax on them. Once you come and situate them in Ghana here and you sell them and you make income on them, you pay tax on it. But for the resident, buildings of a permanent or temporary nature, wherever situated in Ghana, is considered a resident asset. Businesses and assets, including good, wherever situated, is considered the land, wherever situated. So no matter where your asset is located in Ghana, once you make income from it, it is considered capital gain. So these are some of the chargeable assets which are liable to tax. There are some chargeable assets which are not liable to tax. So it means that you'll be given the question. You are supposed to know that the items they've given me, this one is it liable to tax, this one is it not liable to tax. Now, there are some chargeable assets which are excluded from tax. So when you own those things, you don't pay tax. Number one, Securities of a company listed on the Ghana Stock Exchange market. So when you have securities on the stock exchange market, listed on the Ghana Stock Exchange market, you are exempted from tax up to the end of 2010. But after 2010, you'll be paying tax on those things. 
So it means that when you have securities on the Ghana Stock Exchange as of now, it is not exempted. Before, it was exempted. But now, it is not exempted. You have agriculture land. So when you are using a land, so they say lands are subject to capital gain tax. But not all lands are subject to capital gain tax. When you are using the land for agricultural purposes, you are using it for farming, you are using it for irrigation, you are using it for uh, 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 animal husbandry and those stuffs. You don't pay tax on those land. Then trading of stock, or class A, two, class one, two, and three, or four of depreciable assets. So look at it. You have to go back to your taxation class one, class two, class three, and then class four. Depreciable assets are excluded from, uh, sorry, chargeable assets are excluded from this particular illustration we are looking at to find. So you go back to your capital allowance and then look at it very well. Class one, class two, class three, class four. And now take notes. Then, class four was for land and building. Now, class four is, um, I think it's still the same here because we have, before we have class, class five, which will be the goodwill. So it is still the same. So maintain it like that. If you have any question, raise up your hand. I'll give you a call. Then we'll continue. Now, this is a critical one which is likely to be seen in your exams. And when you look at your past questions too, they are there. Procedure for reporting capital gain. As an individual, you have sell a chargeable asset if made a gain on the chargeable asset. What are the procedures you follow to report that gain to the GRE? You don't just walk there and then send the money there and tell them that I've made a gain and I'm coming to pay. There are certain steps you follow. And for you to pay that money, that money must be paid within 30 days when the asset has been realized or when the gain has been realized. Okay? So when you report it, uh, anything, sorry, you must report it 30 days after the realization. Yes, sorry. You must report it 30 days after the realization. So when I sell it today, I have. 30 days free, free day. After the 30 days, I should report it to the Ghana Revenue Authority. And now, when you want to report the asset or you want to report the gain, number one, you must give them the description and location of the chargeable asset. So if I should sell my land right now to you, I should be able to tell them the description of the land, where the land is now and ever then a vivid description about the land. I should be able to tell them the cost base. When we are talking about cost base of an asset, we mean the entirety, what makes up the original cost of the asset. So the original cost of the asset is classified cost base of the asset. Any other ancillary cost you incur in bringing the asset into its first time use is also part of the cost base of the asset. So in cost accounting, we call them incidental costs. So you went to buy the car from uh, uh, Toyota Ghana Limited. You ask the Kaya Ye whether the Kaya Ye can carry car. You ask them to carry the car to Tema Station for you. The money you pay the Kaya Ye is part of the cost base. The carriage or any other cost, registration cost you did at DVL, all other cost you incur on the car before you start to put it to its first use are all part of the cost base of the asset. You can go and buy a plant and then you, before you start to use the plant, you do site preparation, you hire contractors, testing and everything. All those costs you incur before you, 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 you put the asset to its first use is considered cost base of the asset. Then number two, any cost you also incur 
before you realize the asset. So cost you incur in anticipation of realizing the asset. So when you were going to sell it, you went to call a valuer to come and value the asset now and tell you that, oh, we can sell it for this, we can sell it for that. It is part of it. I get it. So any disposable cost you have incurred in disposing of the asset is also part of the cost base. Intermediary costs are not part of the cost base. So from the day you start to use it to the day you stop using it, any cost you incur are not part of it. So those intermediary costs are not part of it. Or facility user costs are not part of it. The consideration received by that person from the realization. So when you sell the assets or when you gift the assets, how much did you get from it is the consideration. So how much you have received in selling the asset is considered the consideration. The amount of any capital gain tax payable with respect to the gain on the tax. So if you bought the thing for 5,000, you sell it now for 8,000, you've made a gain of 3,000. That is what they're talking about. So the gain and then how much tax you are going to be paying on it is what they, they want to know. Then you must tell them the full name and address of the new owner of the asset. The full name and address of the new owner of the asset. So who is the new owner of the asset now? You tell them. Then finally, you tell them any other information, any other information you think is going to be necessary for the Ghana Revenue Authority or is going to be useful for the Ghana Revenue Authority, you also tell them. So these are the procedures you follow in re reporting the capital gain to the GRA. And you must do this by writing. You must do this by writing to the commissioner. Anything you do with the, with the GRA, if you are dealing with the commissioner, so anything you are doing with the GRA is between you and the commissioner and not the staff sitting there. So the procedures of reporting the gain is that you write to the Ghana Revenue Authority, address the commissioner, telling him the description of the asset, the cost base, the consideration you have received, the gain and the tax applicable, and then the vivid description of the new owner and then any other information you think it is going to be important for the, uh, commissioner. Now, in an attempt to calculate capital gain, any gain you made within one Ghana cities and 50 Ghana cities is exempted. So if you make gain more than 50 Ghana cities, let's say 80 Ghana cities, 50 Ghana cities is exempted and then they are going to tax 30 Ghana cities. So you should be able to know that any gain between zero and 50% is tax free, is exempted from the tax, and any gain more than 50% is, any gain more than 50 Ghana cities is tax applicable. That is number one. Number two, capital gain accruing or derived by a company arising out of merger and acquisition where the company is continuity underlining ownership in the asset is 50%, is used to be 25%. So when, let's say, a CBG, let's say, Stanchart, and let's say, um, we are merging Stanchart and let's say, Ecobank, then I am having a stake in Ecobank. And my stake in Ecobank is 50%. Okay, if my stake in Ecobank is 50% or less, and after selling Ecobank to merge it, we have made some gain on it, I am exempted. But if my stake in Ecobank is more than 50% and I make any gain, I'll pay tax on that gain. That is basically what they mean. 
capital gain resulting from transfer of ownership of the asset by a person to that person's spouse, children, parent, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, nephew, or niece are exempted. So if your uncle has sell something to you or have given something to you. Your mother have given something to you. Your aunties has given something to you. It is exempted from capital gain. So anything you have received from a family relation, okay, or anything you have sell to a family relation, that is your spouse, that is your wife, your child, your parent, brother sister uncle nephew they said they use the word transfer so you know sometimes your father can die and he will something for you maybe at the time your father bought the thing it is ten thousand now the thing can be sold for twenty thousand there is a gain of ten thousand on it you will not pay tax because that thing was a transfer to you by who by your father so you don't pay tax or a husband has transferred ownership in the thing to the wife. Though the husband is not dead, but he has transferred the car from his name to the wife. The wife will not pay any gain on that particular item. Capital gain resulting from a transfer of ownership of the asset between former spouses as part of divorce settlement or a genuine separate agreement. So those of you are planning to divorce your wives and your husbands, if you do so, and then your husband is having any property and then they have given you some, you don't pay gain on that asset. So any asset you have received as a transfer, as part of your divorce package, you don't pay tax on any gain that has been accrued to you. Capital gains were the amount received or realization within a year of realization used to acquire chargeable asset of the same nature referred to as replacement cost and blah, 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 blah. So those are basically some of the cogent areas you must take note of. Such gains are exempted from tax. These ones, sometimes when they ask students, they end up confusing it from chargeable assets that are exempted from tax. These ones are gains that are exempted from tax. So the thing can be a chargeable asset that must be taxable, which is not exempted from tax, but because it is before within this category, it must be exempted from tax. Now, I was talking about cost of an asset, cost of an asset, but let's look at when we say cost of an asset, what constitutes the cost of an asset or what constitutes the cost base of an asset. Now, the cost base of an asset, as I told you, includes, yes, Eric, your hand is up. Sure. Yes, we said the exemption is the number one. Yep. Uh, one should be up to 50 cities. Is exempted. Of the asset how to be uh, exempted. I, wa I want to know, okay, I want to know, let's say you have asset um, A and B. And the first asset is, let's say, 40 cities. So that means that asset is exempted. Totally so exempted. Asset, okay, so that asset B, let's say you have 70 cities. Are you going to take out the first 50 out of, or the first 500 out of it and calculate the, the, the percentage on the remaining 200 or 20. we have to? Yes, you do that. So the first 50 is exempted and the remaining 20 is taxed. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Is there? Yeah, and one more on on the C. On the on on the point C. Yes. The transfer of ownership to the person related. So, in terms of company, let's say if the company sold an an asset to let's say the manager's wife, is that one to 
uh, exempted or have to so, that one is taxable already we said that business is separated from its owners so if the company is given to the manager's wife it's a different ball game altogether the manager's wife is not okay. part of the business i get any if they are transferred okay. to the manager's wife in the capacity as an employee of the company there is still the company's property are you getting it? It's still in the company's mm -hmm. name. But where the ownership is transferring in the company's name to the manager's wife's name, that is a different ballgame altogether. It is assumed that the manager's wife is buying it from the company. So she must pay capital gain on that asset. Okay. okay. All right. So we are looking at what constitutes a cost base on, of an asset. And I told you, cost base of an asset is basically the original cost of the asset plus any other incidental cost you incur in bringing to the bringing the asset to its first time use or letting the assets being disposed so in your handout here they said cost base includes the cost and incidental cost and where relevant the cost of construction or production incurred by the person in acquiring ownership of the assets. So any other cost you incur, any money you spend to gain rightful ownership of the assets is a cost base. So you went to the market, you went to buy mobile phone, 700 Ghana cities, you buy screen protector, 100 Ghana cities on top. Now the cost is no more 700, it is 800 Ghana cities. I get any. After buying screen protector, you say, oh, I need a, 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 a case or a cover case. Then added a cover case of, let's say, 50 Ghana cities. The cost is no more 800 again. It is 850 Ghana cities. Then the ladies also have some metal that they normally put at the back. I don't know where that metal tool is coming from. So let's say they buy, they buy that one, 50 Ghana cities again, attach it to the eight. So the cost base is no more 850 now. It is 900 Ghana cities. So this lady will no more put 700 Ghana cities in the account as the cost base. They will put 900 Ghana cities in their account as what the cost base. If tomorrow she decided to sell this mobile phone and things that the screen protector is cracked too small. So she wants to change the screen protector before she sells it. And then she changed screen protector again for 50 Ghana cities. Cost base is no more 900 Ghana cities. It is 950. We are adding this 50 Ghana cities to the 900 because she is going to sell it. But if, let's say, in the course of the usage, she don't even think of selling it, and then she went to change screen protector 50 Ghana cities, cost base is still 850 Ghana cities. It's not 950 because she is still using the asset. So you have changed something in the asset just to use it. You cannot add it to the cost base. But when you have changed something in the asset with the view of selling that asset, you can add it to the cost base. I get to the scenario. Good. So point two, the cost incurred by that person on the alteration and improvement of the assets between the date of acquisition and the date of realization. That is expenditure for the purpose of enhancing the value of the asset which is reflected in the state or nature of the asset at the time of disposal. So you have made changes in the nature of the asset, which is reflecting that, yes, changes have been made for the purpose of it being sold. You can add it to the cost base. Then cost incurred by that person in realizing the asset. So you have incurred some cost in realizing the asset. Let's say you pay some legal fees to change the ownership back again to the new owner, advertising costs, you made some advertising costs in the newspapers for the asset to be sold, the legal fees you paid and all those stuff. So these are basically things we considered cost base. So you can be asked in an examination to explain what constitutes a cost base and you should be able to tell them what constitutes a cost base. So today, this is basically where I'll end you. If you have any questions, you ask me. If you don't have any question, I'll set another meeting time. And then uh, our next meeting in taxi should be looking 
seriously into the calculation aspects of the capital gain. And from there, we'll be looking straight into gift tax. So if you don't have any question to ask me, I'll open the floor for you, then me, I'll be leaving you. But in the meantime, those who are owing, I'm still looking at you, neke neke, pay the money, see mercy, and settle your debt, okay? Don't try to be stubborn boys and girls. So, if you have any question, you ask me. If you don't have any question, the door is open for you. Seyma? Yes. Hello, Seyma. Yeah, you're on floor talk. Uh -huh. Seyma, uh, concerning the, 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 the first tutorial that we had. Yeah. Concerning the first tutorial that we have now. Yeah. Yeah, on the, uh, what, what do you call it? The yeah, disallowable and the allowable. Yes. Yeah, please, uh, like, try and explain to me, like, well, uh, where the items are positioned, whether being uh, allowable and disallowable. I, I just want to make some things clear. So if you can make it clear for me, like, small explanation between the two, the allowable and the disallowable. Uh -huh. yeah, of course, no. Go on. Concerning the expenses to, uh, concerning the expenses to something like uh, salaries and wages and other things were left behind. Like actually, I you was late when I came in. Joined the meeting. So that is why I can you see are. that th those those ones were. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you joined so the meeting. That is why. I can see why. salaries and wages and, and yeah. So yeah. yeah so I salaries that... and wages and other things and they are not added. So. Yes, yeah, salaries and we do you have the hand out there with you? Yeah, yeah, I have it. I have it. So salaries and wages, for example, is an allowable expenditure. I get your name. So when you put it over there, they will not ask you any question. Mm. You put something okay. there like research and development expenditure, it's an allowable expenditure. They will not ask you anything. I get your name. But when you put mm. there as budgets, mm. budget, yes. specific budgets are allowed. General bad debts are disallowed. So provision for bad and doubtful debts are disallowed. I get your name. Okay. Uh -huh. Then yeah, 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 yeah. We are okay. saying that tax losses, tax losses brought forward are allowed. I get your name. Foreign exchange losses are allowed. Okay. Centers for hiring graduates are allowed. Yeah. Finance costs, there should be there should be some condition that must be met before you allow it. Okay. Then we have repairs uh, okay. and improvement. The repairs and improvement to they need to give you certain explanation for you to allow those particular expenditures. I get any. Now, uh, okay, when okay. you come to donations, donations to the donations, if it is to a worthwhile cause, you allow it. Or it is to a national trust, you allow it. Anything apart from that, okay. you disallow it. I get any. So okay, sir. They are more and more and more and more and more over there like that. And I think they are in the video that I'll be sending to you. And then you get more explanation on those ones too as well. Are you getting it? So for you to get the understanding okay, of allowable and disallowable expenditure, they are saying that the expenditure must meet certain criteria. It must meet the okay. deductibility rule. And the deductibility rule here is saying that the expenditure must be wholly spended, it must be exclusively spended, and it must also inure to the benefit of realization of revenue in the company. Are you getting it? So what it means here basically is that the expenses you are going to are incurring, okay. you must spend all on whatever you say you are spending. It must be necessary that you are spending that expenses. And that expenses you have incurred should lead you to the revenue you have generated for this particular year. I get you the scenario. Number two, the expenses you are incurring okay. to must not be of a capital expenditure, but it should be a revenue what? Expenditure. Expenditure. Are you getting it? Yeah. Uh -huh. So basically, these are what they are telling you to do. Or these are some of the criteria you follow to know which expenditure is 
allowable and which expenditure is not allowable. You get it? Okay. Yeah, so you yeah. One more thing. Yeah, so meaning that if the expenses are allowable and when you are computing for the charitable income, no, you don't bring it. Or? You don't bring it at all. Once it is allowable, okay. when you are computing, you don't. It is you. You sort out the disallowables from it. I get any. Okay. Okay. And so the okay. basic thing okay. is I sort out the disallowables and bring them. Okay. That's all. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. For, for, for the salam waste media, you bring it, but for alarm media, just sort, you, you just sort them out. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. okay. That's all. That's all. Okay. 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 All right. Thank you very much. So I'll set another meeting, then uh, we'll see what to do. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. All right. Bye bye. Bye.